and this is joint work with Otmar Hilliges uh, here in the room and Peter Müller at DK Zurich. All right, so this talk is about the effects of uh, code presentation such as syntax highlighting uh, on the understanding of code structure. Um, so syntax highlighting uh, is something that we've used for uh, several decades now, uh, but there's surprisingly little research about the effects of syntax highlighting uh, and similar visualizations uh, uh, like that. So this work is uh, about the study we did precisely in that area. So what we did is well, we compared syntax highlighting to two richer visualizations of code, and we wanted to see what the impact uh, of, the, of, these, of these richer visualizations is on the performance of uh, developers. And so these richer visualizations are two visualizations we designed uh, where the medium condition is different than syntax highlighting by in addition to highlighting keywords, also using outlines and in uh, authentic background colors uh, to show some parts of the code. And the high condition is sort of like this one, but in addition to it, we also have icons uh, instead of keywords and background colors for some statements and expressions, sort of to further uh, illustrate the structure of the code. So using these three visualizations, we had three research questions. The first one is, how does using richer visualizations impact the speed at which developers can, ask, uh, can answer questions about code structure? The second question is, uh, what about the correctness? Uh, does having richer visualizations impede or, or help developers to answer questions about code structure? And the last one is, what about the visual overload? Does having all these symbols and colors and outlines actually make it more difficult for developers to answer uh, questions about code? So here is the study we designed to test these questions. Um, within the study, we designed 15 yes-no questions about programming, uh, about the structure of code. And we ask developers these questions in random order. So these are questions that we find uh, practical, kinds of uh, representative of the low-level tasks developers will experience as they're coding. One example is, uh, for example, is there a nested loop inside the method? So those are the kinds of questions we ask. At the very end of the study, we also ask developers of their opinion of what they've seen, uh, and we collected some demographics. So uh, we did this with 33 developers within each question, uh, we let the developers use the three different visualizations, and we randomized the order of the visualizations as well. And within each visualization, we showed 15 screenshots uh, of methods uh, uh, to each developer. And so these screenshots that you see here, they were drawn from a pool, randomly drawn from a pool of 298 methods that we took uh, of the JEdit Java open source uh, text editor. So this is real code. Right, so a little bit more to the questions that we asked. Um, they're separated in three different categories. Uh, each category has five questions. So here's an example of the question from the first category. It is, is, subtraction, is subtraction used in an expression somewhere in the method? And the categories, uh, the, ca the questions in this category are questions where all three visualizations show the construct relevant for answering this question in a similar way. So essentially, the richer visualizations don't provide any particular enhancement in this case. Uh, an example of the question from the second category is this. Uh, is there a loop nested inside another loop? So in this category of questions, the medium and high condition provide some sort of enrichment that is relevant for the construct uh, that the question asks about. And the last category of questions here is an example. Does the method catch an exception? And so these are questions where only the, the richest visualization provides some particular enhancement and the others don't. All right, so let's see some results. Um, when it comes to correctness, so were developers able to correctly answer uh, the questions? And these are all yes-no questions. Uh, what we observed is essentially no difference uh, between all the different tools. So we asked fairly simple questions about code structure, and developers were mostly able to answer these correctly in many of the times, and this is the raw data here, and there's really no significant difference between the tools. All right, so when it comes to speed, things are a little bit more interesting. So here I will show you the graph, and I'll explain it to you. So on the x-axis, you see the three different categories of questions, and on the y-axis, there's the response time in seconds. So here is one question, uh, and you see here the times are rather similar. We are also going to show you 95% uh, confidence intervals, and these were computed using a robust bootstrap method. So here you see the confidence intervals are somewhat overlapping, and there is no significant difference for this question between the three different visualizations. And we see the same for all the questions from this first category. Sort of as expected, 
all the visualizations display the code in a similar way, at least when it comes to the construct that we asked about. So there's no difference here. Uh, when it comes to the second batch of questions, there is also no difference for this first question over here, but for all the other ones, we see that the enriched visualizations uh, perform significantly better compared to the standard uh, syntax highlighting here in gray. And so this ranges between uh, half a second here or let's say two seconds uh, over here on this side, which is a significant reduction in response time. And in the last category of questions, we also observe a significant reduction in response time, especially here for the high visualization, which provides some particular enhancement. And this, uh, this is five seconds here, for, for example, in the last question. All right. What about uh, visual overload? So some of you might also think, well, okay, this is, this is interesting, but if I stare at all these symbols and colors and icons, my head is going to start spinning. And certainly many of the developers uh, reported something like that. So 23 out of the 33 developers that we had uh, reported at the end of the study some, some form of visual confusion or overload with, uh, with these presentations. Um, however, it's worth to point out that this is really a subjective uh, perception. And if you remember the data, there was no difference in correctness. And when it comes to the time data, the three visualizations either performed sort of equally well or the richer visualizations uh, performed significantly better uh, in the last part of these questions. So what's interesting to point out here is particularly this first batch of questions where developers had to answer a question pertaining to a construct that wasn't enriched by any visualization. So here there's high potential for overload because you're looking at all these symbols and colors and outlines that actually don't help you to answer the question. But even in that case, uh, we didn't see any, any negative effects. So uh, basically, we did not observe any visual overload and there's a mismatch between what developers self-reported and what we actually measured. All right, so in conclusion, uh, we observe that when it comes to speed, uh, there is up to 75% or, or five seconds reduction in the response time to answer questions about code structure. Uh, the 15 particular questions we asked, uh, there was no difference in them when it comes to uh, correctness of so developers almost always answered them correctly. And we did not measure visual overload, which was a mismatch compared to what developers self-reported. So uh, in conclusion, I think it's worth exploring such enhanced visualizations a little bit more uh, and we, we think they hold high potential for improving uh, under understanding of code structure. So if you want to know more, you can visit the project webpage and where you can also download the complete data for the study to replicate it or to reanalyze it. Thank you. I really like this style of rock style asking questions from one of the colleagues. I'm going to repeat it. <laughs> I'm not going to sing, although it's kind of late and I can wake up people, but anyway. Um, have you tested this kind of approach of highlighting and some putting some visual cues in text and uh, see if it speeds up the protest, uh, process of reading or comprehension maybe? So we have not tested it directly in text, uh, but I mean you can imagine, you can see these visualizations. You could reasonably construct an ID or some tool that sort of renders these lines in addition to the text. So I believe this is sort of close to what you're already asking. I think a tool could do that. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that personally. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, David Carger, MIT. Uh, regarding this sort of contradiction between what they were mm -hmm. subjectively reporting, um, do you think it might be because they had some other tasks in mind for which they felt that the, like, like you gave them specific tasks, but did you sort of talk to them about what they might want to be doing using the ID and that, that perhaps it was things that you didn't test that, that, that were making them unhappy about the, the uh, visual overload that they perceived? Right, thank you. So we did talk to them about other things, but actually this number 20, 23 out of 33, that specifically pertained to problems with these tasks. So actually many users, um, including some of the pilot users who tried, they, they felt that they were slower with the highest visualization. And they, many users said they preferred this, this medium level, uh, although they were faster with the other one and, and there was basically no disadvantage that we measured. Thank you. Yep. Hi, I'm Nanshan from University of Washington. I just wonder, uh, have you guys tested this with more like deep, like? Uh, comprehension in terms of the functionality of the code rel and just the structure? 
Right, thank you. So that's a great question. Um, so we haven't done that. The kinds of visualizations we do here, they would really be more helpful on the sort of lower level tasks. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen some previous studies that uh, ask students to, let's say they show them a 10, 10 line method and ask them, well, what does this do? Mm -hmm. and, and that takes maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes to decipher. And you see here we're talking about seconds. So okay. this isn't really gonna help in such a very high level task. I see, I see. Uh, not thank as you. much. Thank you.